Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the In Off The Post podcast. Sh- shall we get into this week's top five? Top five. Yes, so this week we are discussing uh, the top five free transfers ever. Uh, this was quite a fun list to put together in my eyes. I, I enjoyed it. I've got seven honourable mentions. Seven, on seven honourable, honourable mentions. mentions? When you said seven, I thought you were like, overall, I've done eight overall. Oh no, I've, I've done, well, twelve. Twelve players who I think have been great. That's not bad. <sighs> transfers. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to list off my honourable mentions. Oh, I quickly. think we should before. Well, it's slightly restructured. Liam hasn't got a top five this week, has he? Liam, you are going to tell us if we're right or we're wrong, aren't you? Yeah, but on my you know my huge amount of knowledge of football as an Arsenal fan, I will try and judge whose list I think is is. I've maybe got more I've got one name that will please you. I'm sure. Oh no, nice. oh, I've got I've got one as well. Oh, actually, no, he's in my no, he's in my honorable okay. mentions. Maybe anyway. he's probably in mine then. Um, okay, so I'm going to list off my honorable mentions. Juventus come up a lot in in this list, including the honorable mentions. I'll just throw that out there. So we've got Sami Kadira to Juventus in 2015, I believe it was. Uh, Danny Alves to Bar from Barca to Juve uh, last last season or I could two even have him to go. You know, Juve to PSG this year. Yeah, you could. Uh, and then I've got a throw an oddball at you, Denver Bar to Newcastle in 2011. Did you just go on to the, the Mail Online or whatever and just go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, no. paste? I, no, I, it was actually the Telegraph, I think it was, where Denver <laughs> Bar's in. Uh, I tried to, I had a quick look online. I was like, I'll try and throw some names to rival you guys, but you have to click 20 times to get to the number one spot. So all I ended up did was just staring at Denver Bar's face. I, I, all I, these I, are from I've, the Dome, I I've, promise. I've, and your gain is unbelievably I've, high right now. I've only included him. Um, because I thought he had a great <laughs> season, like in 2011, 2012, for yeah, for, for Newcastle. Newcastle. I, I all honestly, all these were off the dome. Yeah, I obviously then high. researched them afterwards, but honestly, I didn't look a single listicle. That's that's okay because I looked at a lot in t- for <laughs> research in this. <laughs> we uh, we ne- did the two extremes. <laughs> ne- next next one I'm going to say is JJ Okocha to Bolton. That was a free oh, wow. transfer. When was that? Um, oh, 2001, 2002, something. Yeah, was it as late as that? I would have said 99. Yeah, and, and then I've got Michael Ballack to Chelsea in 2006. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> from that, yeah. he joined from Bayern Leverkusen. The year before, Bayern Leverkusen had come run up, run, run up in the Bundesliga, lost the uh, the the cup final, lost the Champions League final. They, they he, he wasn't winning anything with them. That was quite funny. No, and then I've my last one, which didn't make it to my list, you might be surprised, is Latin Ibrahimovic to United in 2016. Oh, really? That didn't make my list. Wow. It was um, JJ, 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 JJ. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, m- I've, got, I've got three honourable mentions. Uh, uh, luckily for me, you only man- mentioned one of them, uh, which was Sami Khedira to Juventus in 2015. Okay. Um, number six I had, if I was going to you know, do a top ten, <coughs> was Sol Campbell from Spurs yes, to Arsenal thank you, thank in you. 2001. Obviously became part of the Invincibles. Mm-hmm. And number eight was Steve McManaman. Now, he, he features so far down my list because obviously this is way before my time. 1999, he moved, uh, did that move. Uh, it was from uh, Liverpool to Real Madrid. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but I, I, I was born in 99, so I couldn't have known. But from... Uh, I will second mention my dad's getting on the podcast. Uh, from talking to him about him, well, this was a while ago. He honestly th- thought that he was probably one of the best midfielders in the world, and uh, at the time there was a massive fuss kicked up over it. I have the only reason he's not on my list is because I haven't, like you say, I have, I wasn't old enough to watch McManaman back in the day. I only know him because of his punditry on BT Sport. So, so he hasn't exactly got a great legacy amongst millennials. Um, I I I don't know. Uh, I, if I'd seen him play, I probably would have put him higher potentially. But uh, yeah. what uh, position did he play? If you don't mind, um, he was a centre mid. Oh, okay. Yeah. So his stats sort of similar to Iniesta, who was in the. He never scored a lot of goals, but he, he ran so unbelievably. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sure he got in the team of the year once. I'm sure. I but I, but I could that could be wrong. Anyway, um, number five. Should Come we on, kick it off? Do you want me to start? Or uh, yeah, you go. You okay. go first. Uh, my number five is Andrea Perlo. Um, to you, Vane, 2011. Yeah, well, it's, it's the same one as me. Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Same so number, same player. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you got some stats? Because I, I didn't think this I one have, needed much um, explaining. He made two... Well, 
I'll, I'll take it chronologically. So he arrived from AC Milan uh, after being out for four months and struggling to get back into the squad as a, the coach at the time, Massimiliano, adopted a new system, so he was sort of gradually fading out of the squad. He made 284 appearances for Milan over 10 years, scoring 32 goals and winning nine trophies. Mm. Uh, during his time at Juventus, however, Pirlo made 164 appearances for the club, while scoring 19 goals and assisting 38 along the way. Uh, he won four Serie A titles with Juventus and helped them reach the Champions League final in 2015. But I think Gigi Buffon uh, has came out around the time... So, uh, he outlined his reaction to the news that Pirlo was going to sign for them and he said it's, it's got to be the, the the signing of the decade or yeah. the signing of the century. I'm sure someone else, and I can't get the exact quote, um, said that um, when when Pirlo signed for Juventus, he realised God existed. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, it, it, was quite, it was quite funny and he is so God highly... God is real, yeah. I think that's the quote. Oh, well, there we are. Uh, it, it's, it's so... Um, very, well, he's very much considered one of the best Italian players ever. Um, one of the you, best midfielders ever. You, you watch him play, and he was so unique, and he just played so coolly. And ne- this, this is never this, this, is, this is during his Juventus days as well. Mm. Should we not talk about his prime for it, AC Milan as well, well? But he was ousted from Inter Milan when he was, I think, twenty-four-ish, and they thought that he'd passed his best. Mm. Then he went to their rivals, did amazingly well, and then thought oh he's passed his best again and then did it even better at, at Juventus and won uh, his most successful part of his career was probably at Juventus although he did win the skin, uh, in, ter- in terms of scale and time yeah because he won nine <laughs> trophies at Milan but he I don't that think he's won I found it um, oh, please. it was Juve keeper Buffon fell in F um, when he found out he was joining Juventus he said uh, when Andrea told me that he was joining us the first thing I thought was God exists oh wow well, <laughs> so uh, well between the two of us me and Ross got the, the quote dead on um, oh that's fair enough I, I, fun, f- f- well I wouldn't say fun fact but Recently announced his retirement at the beginning of the season yeah. uh, after a couple of seasons for New York FC. The, the, in, yeah, in the, the retirement league. Yeah, so <laughs> big big up Andreas Pirlo. He's just the biggest baller in football as yeah, well. Thank you, you for causing no, Pirlo, great, no party. Thank you for causing great pain to Liverpool in the Champions League final oh, in 2007. Oh, oh no, no, really? we've been nice enough to of that. It's <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> Your gain is far too high. <laughs> 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 anyway, should we get into number Sorry, fours? If Liverpool fans oh go no. after Ross, West Ham fans will go after me. It's fine. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll protect All good. It. Tin pot. Anyway, um, uh, number fours. Um, oh. my, my, my number four is Latan from PSG to oh, okay. Man United okay. in 2016. I'll, s- okay. I'll see okay. what. I, I, I can you. see why, but um, I've yeah, I mean, you're the United fan, so maybe you're better to, to talk about this than I am. I've, I, I've, pe- I've <laughs> based my list purely on... Um, players who made an impact across multiple seasons, which is why ah, Dan, okay. Dani Alves isn't in my list, as well as Latin Ibrahimovic, because in the we've... one season, one full season, shall we say, is Latin played for United, he only scored, I think, 20 goals in all competitions, and United finished sixth in the league. See, so see we, we took a different approach. I mean, granted, thing. he came in at a time where United really needed a striker. Uh, uh, well, one of my picks, well. then, uh, further up, is, is a very short-term fix that, that popped up and, and did really well. I'll, okay. I'll talk more about that later, but for Zlatan, Zlatan, you know, obviously PSG to Man United 2016. Um, most thought that when it came to the BPL, he was already a bit past it, although he had a good season the previous year, so they thought he couldn't you know, make the step up from the French League. Um, but he proved everyone wrong, including me. I, I, didn't, I genuinely didn't think he'd do well. He, he had a bit of an injury hit season last year, uh, even without doing his ACL <coughs> in April, um, and still scored 17 and 28 games in the Premier League, which was impressive. Mm. Um I mean, yeah, he proved so many wrong and, and made a massive contribution to, you know, uh, Man United qualifying for the, the Champions League because they won the Europa League. But he still wasn't our best player last season. He wasn't, but I thought, uh, in terms of recent memory, um, over the last couple of years, he probably is the best free transfer. Uh, yeah, th- yeah. I, I'd agree with that. But like I said, if he continues to perform... The same to the same level this season. If we were doing this list in a year or two years' time, looking back, I would probably say yeah. But purely for the fact that he's only uh, performed in one season and he was injured for like the last three months of mm. it, I can't say it, it was in the top five best free transfers of all time. Depending on how he comes back from from this knee yeah, injury, for he, sure. he may have two more seasons in him. Yeah. Okay. Um, my number four is actually uh, going back to Serie A, Esteban Cambiasso. 
from oh, Real okay. Madrid to Inter Milan in 2004. All right, uh, that's a fair point. Um, um, ten years of service for Inter, 435 appearances. He became one of the one of the standout players in the Serie A in 2004-2005 season, alongside Kaka. Obviously, part of Mourinho's famous treble winning Inter Milan side. Uh, there, he lifted the Serie A trophy five times and won the Champions League in 2010. He's and not on my list at all. No, but because uh, I, uh, I remember him at um, Leicester. Now I know that was towards the end of his career, and he only had one year there, but he was awful. He no, was but really, really he bad. Nevertheless, he was still. He, was g- he must have been good at Inter. I never watched him. I can believe world class at, at Inter Milan. He was definitely the rock in midfield and part of the Argentine connection that I- Inter Milan have been famous for, with the likes of Melito, Zanetti, and Cambiasso, obviously. Anyway, right. um, number three is <laughs> it's Paul Pogba. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, w- I, I want to say Pant on this one. Okay, uh, I I will I will just say then uh, they <laughs> uh, <coughs> the Juventus picked him up on a free from Man United and then sold him back for a world record fee. Brilliant business. Enough said. Fair point. What's My number, number three? three is actually Saul Campbell. Okay. Uh, to Arsenal in two thousand and one. So Fair. not much I can really add to because uh, obviously he was your number five. But he was number number six, actually. He didn't quite... Oh, OK, it. OK. I'm, I'm wrong again. I bet that his, his name's Alexander Sol. <laughs> 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 We're talking about his first spell at the Gunners now, not the 2009-2010 season, shall we? Oh, I completely forgot that even let's happened. Let's just clarify that. But he made 135 total appearances for <laughs> Arsenal in the league across five seasons from 2001 to 2006, only scoring eight goals, but he's a centre-back, so don't really care for that. Uh, he won the FA Cup and League double in his first season, uh, obviously beating Chelsea in the final. Distinctly remember watching that game during, I think it was my great-grandmother's 80th birthday party in a manor. Big scenes, big scenes. Um, I bet she went mental. <laughs> but, um, he, manor. <laughs> he helped Arsenal win two Premier League titles in 2001-2 and obviously the Invincible season became a crucial part of that team, I believe. Yeah, uh, he did. He was I a rock. Along with Colo Torre, funnily enough, <laughs> his, his centre back partner in that season, but two FA Cups as well, 2002 and 2005, and he was named twice in the PFA Team of the Year. Mm-hmm. Team of the Year, now that is Team of the Year. You know the one that we are uh, that we slated in yesterday for being in. Saul Campbell was in it twice. <laughs> oh, oh really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. I mean, I I, I really really um <coughs> rate Saul Campbell um. Uh, maybe right. Well, no, no, not maybe. He is a very sneaky human being, uh, especially <laughs> after that uh, post-match interview where he's still playing for for Spurs. And the the reporter asks him, "Are you staying?" And he just looks so dead in the eye and just goes, "Don't worry, I'm staying." And then <laughs> <laughs> the next summer um, uh, leaves on a free. Um, it turned down also being Spurs' highest paid player for less money to go to Arsenal. Oh, so he really wanted oh to leave. Lord. Um, but I mean, in, in, in look, looking back at it, definitely wasn't a bad decision. <laughs> no, no. Wait, um, c- can you complain? Um, I assume, I'm assuming that your number two is someone who I've already mentioned because our number one is 100% the same person. 100%. Uh, yeah, my number two is Paul Pogba. Yeah, all right. Give us a, give us a few. Uh, so, obviously, uh, sh- transferred from United to UV in 2012. Infamously, the one of the worst players to go out, well... It was, it was a bittersweet situation because, granted, he did become world-class at Juve and he wasn't getting game time at all at United. So, But uh, we've had stick for it for the last like f- three or four years that he's been performing at Juventus. I haven't seen a forum online or anything that hasn't said, ha-ha, United let him go for free <laughs> and now they're paying £90 million for him. And ha. <laughs> but no, um, All Liverpool fans, all of them turning down 90 for Coutinho because he's worth 200 <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so he re-signed for United obviously last summer for a then world record fee, spark, spiralling transfer fees out of control, should we say? No, uh, I don't think that was the catalyst, personally. What do you think Neymar was? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah okay. I think I'd agree with that. Uh, 34 goals and 32 assists from midfield in 178 games for Juve, not bad for a young player. Um, uh, helped Juve to four consecutive Serie A titles, he won two Coppa Italias and, su- and two Super Coppa Italianas. So th- he's he's definitely used to silverware, despite being only twenty four <laughs> years old. Apologies, carry on. <laughs> I mean, Paul Paul Pogba, um, like like Bev said in his link to, well, his little teaser for us talking about this player. The Juve brought him in for free and sold him for a world record fee. Best bit of business ever, probably. For sure. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, have you number, said your no, I haven't said no, about number, number two. two. My number two, um, you again. I'm going a little bit far back for this. Um, Henrik Larsson, going from Celtic to Barcelona. Okay. Okay. Now, at Celtic, um, he's had he, he scored 174 goals in 221 games, and that was when the Scottish league was all right. You know, it, it's not now, but it it, it was it was a it's it was okay. Seven five. Se- <laughs> seven one. Have we got to start P- again? <laughs> seven um, one lost to PSG uh, last week. Should we say Celtic? Should have played. Uh, what many did Brendan Rodgers say at the back? He said, "I played five. Which one did he play? <laughs> seven. <laughs> yeah. I felt he gave that that it was a the female reporter. I felt he gave her a really hard time. Really? Yeah. No, I, I saw the the full interview. I thought he's just being a uh, you know being hard for for no reason. Yeah. Anyway. um yeah, so so he was probably one of the best strikers in the world at the time. Um, he was unbelievable, <coughs> um, but after an injury, um, they, for some reason Celtic decided they wouldn't uh, renew his contract. Uh, so he joined Barcelona. So not you know not much of an upgrade. Um, <laughs> in the two years he spent there before going back <laughs> to Sweden, uh, his homeland, he. <laughs> Got uh, it's simple. He got the assist to win the two thousand and six World Cup. Uh, well, World Cup Champions League. <laughs> yeah, Sweden won the World Cup in two thousand and six. No, uh, two thousand and six Champions League. It was actually um, Henrik Larsson that headbutted <laughs> Matarazzi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I think probably at that time Henrik Larsson had dreadlocks. So you, I mean, you, you would get headbutted and then also get smacked in the back of the head <laughs> by those massive dreadlocks. Anyway. Um, no, I, I, he was a fantastic player, and any Celtic fan will tell you that he was probably the best striker in the world at the time. He was unbelievable. Um, in ooh, f- ooh. in four, in Ma- four Manchester United legend as well. I mean, yeah, he, he played. Fun a fact, actually, when I, when, when I was on my tour, or um, la- or beginning of last season, I did a tour of Old Trafford. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm glad you did context. I said that when I was on tour. As, I as, 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 <laughs> double as, life. <laughs> anyway, I was, I, Boys I, on tour. We, we were um, just opposite the Stratford end, and the tour guide said, "Can any of you um, name the two new nationalities that have joined in Manchester United this season?" And someone obviously named Henrik Mkhitaryan in Armenia, yeah. and I was like, "Okay, fair enough." And then some, and then he was like, "So what's the second? And then some little kid put his hand up and went, "Sweden!" And I was like, "Nah, mate, Henrik Larsson." And then please tell me you smacked him. No, <laughs> I, I nearly did, but then I got the next right answer, which was Ivory Coast, Eric Bailly. So for, I know my United trivia, trivia guys. Cat catch me on the Old Trafford stadium <laughs> tour every weekend, just <laughs> slapping kids in the face. <laughs> <laughs> to the day you reunited with that kid. <laughs> no, this is not the first sweet United. <laughs> One day when we're all retired, there's a 40 year old bloke. He's in therapy. It's like, and then he said Henrik Larsson was <laughs> Swedish, and I've never been the same. And and it's all because of Ross. Anyway, um, he he only played 40 games in two years for Barcelona. Which proves that he was still struggling with an injury. He scored twelve goals, and most of those were off the bench. Just, just, a, just a quick inqui- inquiry. The injury you're talking about is the leg break. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. he really struggled to get back. I think he did. Did he do? I think it was like tendon and ligament damage when he when they did it. So it, it was a <coughs> bad, bad injury. Yeah, and and he like even although this was only eleven years ago or, or, or so, the medicine and science is come so far in that kind of area sports science for sure so by we're not talking about uh what's his name you know ibra coming back from an acl in eight months you yeah. know it's completely different either way he's my number two because for some reason celtic decided that he wasn't good enough and then won a champions league anyway we're almost out of time so hit me with your number ones your last uh, chance i think to we've, got, me. we've definitely got the same player yeah, robert yeah. lewandowski Oh, I had Victor and HP uh, to Sunday last year. <laughs> stop it. Stop, stop doing this, Bev. Stop saying uh, his name. <laughs> so Lewandowski to Bayern in 2014, the best free transfer of all time. I think we can both agree on that. Yep. Uh, so he joined from Borussia Dortmund in 2014 at the end of his contract, has scored 127 goals in 165 games for Bayern across all competitions so far, and for me has cemented himself as the most consistent and the one of the best strikers in the last four or five years. For sure. I don't need to add anything to that. He, yeah, he's fantastic. And not to mention scoring five goals and coming off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, yeah, for me, <coughs> I mean, we go through this debate all the time of whether him and Suarez is better. But for me, 
Robert Lewandowski is the best striker in the world at the moment, I think. Okay. There's not one player in Europe has done it so consistently, and his his goal scoring record speaks for speaks for himself. And the fact 